and welcome to Viewpoint. I'm joined today by Dr. George Foti. He's an executive on the board of the Ukrainian Canadian Professionals and Business Association. George, many thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. A pleasure being here. Um, we wanted to speak to you today about the results of the Canadian general election, which was uh, held earlier this week, as you know. Of course, um, you've got the Liberal Party in power now after uh, nine years of Conservative rule. Um, Justin Trudeau at the helm. Um, tell us a little bit, as a Canadian, what does this mean? Uh, Liberals, back in power. Well, first of all, by having me here, I have to... Uh, and, and you being a former Canadian, <laughs> I have to... Uh, hand you something from home. I hope you wear it with pride. I and will. Many thanks. Many thanks. This is a, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Um, I, um, personally, I've never dabbled in politics. I've followed it, of course. Uh, my career has taken me through business uh, and dentistry and the medical profession in particular. Uh, but, of course, uh, in terms of family issues and uh, personal business issues, I keep close monitor on what the platforms are uh, what's going to mean to me, uh, what is it going to mean to my family, what's it going to mean to the country as a whole, my province, city, infrastructure. Uh, Conservatives had a good run. Uh, I think Harper was uh, a good leader. And uh, certainly I think he was an intelligent man. And I uh, had good platforms for Canada. And uh, over the last nine years you feel that you know, the country's moved forward, has grown under, under Harper. You're sorry to see him go. In my personal opinion, yes. There's a lot of people, detractors, who will say no. In my viewpoint, uh, the country has expanded. We weathered the uh, the 2008 recession better than any other country in the world. Yes, yeah. uh, even better than Europe and the United States. Um, and uh, our real estate didn't collapse. Our interest rates didn't skyrocket. Uh, life actually got better through that crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was good economic stewardship. Uh, having said that. Um, yeah, so why, it, why though, given that, um, it's a good record, why then have Liberals come into power here, and with quite a large majority as well? What was it then, do you think, that changed um, within the electorate that, uh, that made them you know, want to see Harper go? I think it's change. I think it's just change, uh, and I think it's a good thing. Uh, the public wants change and needs change from time to time. Uh, it's, I think it's, it's folly to have too many people in the same positions for too long. Mm -hmm. uh, they may become comfortable and, and may not uh, be as aggressive in policies. Um, the, the Liberals had a very good platform. I think uh, uh, Justin Trudeau reached out, uh, and now our Prime Minister Trudeau, the Honourable uh, Justin Trudeau, uh, reached out to the youth. Okay. And he's, he's quite young himself. He's in yes. his 40s. Yes. And I think uh, they, they got the youth to vote. I think he, he was attracted uh, by women uh, or attractive to women. I think he got the women vote out. Okay. Uh, and their platforms are, aren't uh, uh, too much different uh, than the Conservatives. They're a little bit more... Uh, there's more difference between the Conservatives uh, and the Liberals versus the Social Democrats. Right. There's a lot of difference in policy there. But the Liberals over the years that I've seen have moved... Uh, closer to the center. And uh, the Conservatives have moved from the right closer to the center. So there's not that much real difference, uh, okay. I, I think, in, in policies, except on uh, when it comes to elections, how are we going to spend our money? Right. And so different people will promise different things. Why? Because it's election time. Sure. And as a member of the um, Ukrainian diaspora, if I may say that, um, is there any particular, for that community, um, has there been... Uh, a strong leaning towards the Liberals or the Conservatives, either way? Uh, in, certainly in, in so, with some in, individuals, but I got the feeling uh, from the majority, uh, it's voting uh, whoever uh, will get the job done and will, whoever will carry the voice of the Ukrainian community um, to government. Okay. So I'm personally a supporter of uh, Boris Shisnowski, who won a uh, Liberal candidate, and he has been uh, in, uh, an MP in the past uh, under Jean Chrétien. And Martin, uh, he's a very intelligent man. I know him personally. Uh, I have also uh, supported uh, Christina Freeland. Uh, she won her seat. Uh, she's a newcomer to federal politics and provincial politics. Yvonne Baker is a liberal. Support him. Peggy Nash is a NDP. I support her. Although I haven't supported her personally, I support her direction. Uh, and so I think, that, by and large, the Ukrainian community uh, will vote for whoever 
will get the message of the Ukrainian community closer to the, to the government and the decision makers. Okay. So I don't think uh, as a whole uh, the Ukrainian community will say, well, I, I'm a, I'm, we're all conservatives or we're all liberals. Right. I think we vote strategically. Okay. As other ethnic groups, I think other groups do and can. And is, is for the Ukrainian community, is it very important um, issues related to Ukraine here? Or are they mostly more concerned about issues that they face now living in Canada? I mean, how important is you know, the, the trials and tribulations that we have here in this country and the conflict, for example, with Russia? Um, does that reflect in the Ukrainian community in Canada, in their voting choices, in their politics? Very much so. Uh, until, this, uh, until the Maidan, um, the Ukrainian Canadian community was basically, had basically given up uh, on Ukraine. Uh, and ongoing issues, corruption... Um, uh, inability to do business. Okay. Um, they'd, given up, they'd given up on Ukraine. They more or less. I was a former executive on the County Ukraine Chamber of Commerce for three years, so I'm aware of uh, several business deals that were done in Ukraine worth millions of dollars that were lost and are still going through the courts. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I was, was recruiting members to the Chamber of Commerce, people were basically telling me, "Why do we exist for?" because you can't do business in Ukraine anyway. And, and, and the Ukrainian community basically gave up. They focused more on what it means to be Ukrainian-Canadian. Okay. Or Canadian-Ukrainian. Right. So yes. what issues are important for us? Well, a very intelligent man, uh, Paul Grod, the president of the uh, um, Ukraine-Canadian Congress, he's been pushing agendas, uh, and he worked closely with the previous government. He's still our president. Uh, um, uh, the provincial presidents of uh, the Ukrainian Ukraine Congress have worked provincial, with provincial governments on issues. Okay. And then there's independents, such as uh, Mr. Lubomir Lesuk, who's professor of history and geography at Canada's only military college in can Kingston. I, can I just pick you up on, on one thing you just said yeah. there, actually? Um, you mentioned you know, people are uh, Ukrainian-Canadians or Canadian-Ukrainians. Um, is that an important distinction? Is um, there anything in that? Not for me. No. No. Um, I, think, I think I would say first Ukrainian-Canadian. Okay. But maybe if I'm speaking outside of my diasporal roots, yes. I may say Canadian-Ukrainian. Okay. But I, I don't think it really matters much. Okay. And then there's, another, uh, there's a fellow uh, named uh, Professor of History at the Canada's Military College in, in Kingston. Uh, he's, a very act he's very active in the community. Um, uh, he stirs up quite a lot of... Uh, uh, issues. Okay. Uh, founder of the Ukrainian Canadian Civil, Civil Liberties Association. Right. And right. he's championed things like uh, throwing out KGB agents uh, that are hiding in Canada. Right, right. And he championed uh, the recognition of the first internship in Canada in 1917 when uh, people from Galicia, or Halichina as they say in Ukrainian, yes. Western, West Ukraine. Uh, Western Ukraine was yeah. under the Habsburg Empire, uh, mm -hmm. Western Hungary. And they ended up in Canada as Austrians and as seen as enemy aliens by Eng the English who kind of didn't really understand the politics. And there were a couple of deaths in the, in the intern camps and they were forced labor. For example, Banff National Park, okay. that you would know very well, yes. was built by these Galicians right. that were right. interned at the park. And now he has gotten the government to recognize that as an error, to apologize to the community. Okay. It's fine. Uh, okay. A fund has been set up to, re uh, to uh, put up uh, plaques and and educate the public about okay. this error okay. and it's also supposed to be in the new museum in Winnipeg uh, other things such as the monument to communism okay uh, so, George, those are so, those so, are community issues uh, in, in Canada okay uh, sorry to interrupt you it's a, we're, we're a bit short on time I so I know I, I so I understand this is quite an active you know Ukrainian community civil society in in Canada now. very much so um, uh, Justin Trudeau he said yesterday in his in his speech he said um, or sorry it was in the last couple of days, he said that Ukraine, uh, sorry, Canada is back on the world stage. Um, so do you think now, I mean, with the Maidan, has sort of reignited the Ukrainian-Canadian community to get back behind Ukraine? Um, are we going to see more from Canada in terms of support now going forward for Ukraine? Uh, what do you think? Is... Well, the Maidan ignited that... Uh... Uh, the, 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 the Ukrainian spirit in Ukrainian Canadians. Mm -hmm. uh, when I talked about abandoning Ukraine, all of a sudden the Ukrainian Canadian community, along with every other country in the world, whether it's the United States, Australia, France, England, yes. they ignited the community to come together again to support. Uh, we went through certain difficulties. For example, the first two transport planes that left Canada arrived on the black market. They didn't go to the front. Right. Uh, I was speaking as a 
uh, OSCE ODIR uh, observer in the last election in October, I uh, was in uh, Western Ukraine, Eastern Ukraine, Zaporizhia, uh, that the uh, Lithuania sent out a transport plane and it also disappeared. So there were hiccups in the beginning, okay. but I think th that those issues have improved. For example, a good friend of mine, Lena Kasharny, who lives in Kiev, she greets the shipment in Odessa and follows it all the way. I see. And other countries are doing the same. Okay. So to so that the, there's there's ways to solve these problems, okay. and not only from the, the Ukrainian government side, but also from the diaspora side. So, so yes, Joe, Joe, very quickly, very quickly, in yeah. a word, new government, Ukrainian diaspora is getting back behind the country. The future is bright. I think the future is very bright. The Conservative government did a lot for Ukraine. They stood behind Ukraine and they stood behind the Ukrainian Canadian community in its efforts. Uh, Justin Trudeau and his um, entourage and his ministers, and especially Boris Yasnowski, they're going to be fighting very hard. Christina Freeland's going to be fighting very hard. They've made certain promises, such as getting Russia, looking at getting Russia off the SWIFT banking system that would really cripple the economy. Uh, first of all, Crimea has to be removed off the SWIFT system that he would uh, tell to put into his face what he thinks of him. Well, that's, I don't know if <laughs> diplomats can do that. But yes, I think it's very positive and, and there's a new vigor. Uh, I think Canadians feel, okay, it's a liberal government, whether conservative or liberal, there have been promises made and there's a new vigor going forward. Fantastic. Excellent. Many thanks, George, for coming in to speak with us. It's been a pleasure, actually, a real pleasure. Good. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Viewpoint. We've been joined by Dr. George Foti. He is a member of the board of the Professionals and Business Association, the Ukrainian-Canadian Professionals and Business Association. You've been watching Viewpoint. This is Ukraine Today. <laughs>